How's it going? Hey, not bad, Rube. How you been? I'm good, I'm good. So I was telling you about this uh, developer who was trying to set up the Simple Viewer app. They were starting their own iModelGIS app and they wanted to start off uh, with that sample, but they got confused uh, when they saw the samples repo. They weren't sure how to just create their own independent project. Yeah, he's he's not the first one that has, has run into trouble with that. So I think this can be very valuable for a lot of people. All right, so I thought we would do this uh, quick walkthrough for uh, the Amarillo JS developers out there, anyone who's interested in uh, starting out. So what we're going to go through in this video is uh, just the simple steps for setting up Simple Viewer app. They have changed recently because we moved to the Amarillo JS samples repo. We'll do a quick demo and then we'll do a code walkthrough that gets you the basic concepts down so you understand how the code is structured. All right, the first thing we need to do is go to our Amarillo JS uh, repo. So we'll just click on the GitHub link, uh, we want to go to the main page and look at all our repositories. So for those of you who worked with Simple Viewer app before, you might have been used to the independent repo that it had. Uh, it's been archived recently, and now everything, all the samples, including the query agent uh, and the test utility, have been moved into a unified place called the AmodelJS samples repo. Now this has uh, the query agents uh, and it has some interactive apps, which includes the Simple Viewer app. It also has some other samples. Uh, and it's the idea is it's a unified location for all the Amarillo JS samples, sample code, and examples to exist. So you have your one-stop shop for anything that you might need. Um, so how do we just use the simple viewer app like we used to from this repo? We'll dig into that. So this is a Rush-based repo. So let's go ahead and start by cloning it. I'm going to open up a command prompt. Let's do a git clone and get that copied over. We'll navigate to the folder and do a rush install, which will install all the dependencies for all the different samples collectively. If you don't have rush installed, uh, you can do that real quick by running this npm command. Get that in and that should set you up. And I'll add a link to this at the bottom. All right, once we have successful install, uh, we have all the dependencies. The next step is to build our actual project. Now, if you do a uh, rush build, then it's going to build all the samples, but you might just be interested in, in uh, the Simple Viewer app. If that's the case, all you have to do is type in two and give the name of the project. So in this case, it's Simple Viewer app and press enter, and this will build just that specific sample. Now, how do you get a list of all the different projects? What you can do is there's a rush.json file within this directory, uh, this one right here. And this contains the list of samples, and that that's the the package name that you will be adding to the rush build to command. Well, how do I output this? Do you remember? Uh, just type it. Type rush. Oh, JSON. type. I'll literally type it. Great. Uh, <laughs> type rush. JSON. All right. So, for example, these are uh, the different project names. So I use a uh, simple viewer app. So let's say you were doing the the basic viewport app. You would do rush build to basic viewport app and it will build that one once we have a successful build we will navigate to that simple viewer app folder so that's under interactive app so we talked about in the beginning with the developer who was getting stuck at not being able to pull out the simple viewer app as a separate project that's something that uh, some people have had confusion uh, around and i just wanted to demonstrate how you would do that so let's uh, go ahead and open up this folder uh, and will you add something to add here about the samples repo well, yeah. Um, so the idea was to produce this uh, samples showcase free hierarchy that we could have all the samples consolidated. But if a particular one needs to be pulled out, like we're doing for this case, uh, it's a simple matter of just copying that out to a, a separate project and getting started with that. So it's not limiting. OK, so let's do that real quick here. Um, so we're going to go into interactive app and that's where the simple viewer app is. So let me copy that and I'll go all the way out to the, the demo folder and uh, paste this. That's actually all you need to do. Now I can just go back to this console and uh, let's go back to the Simple Viewer app and we can do our regular NPM install, the, all the packages. And after the install, the usual build step, and then we can do our run just like in the old days and that'll be your project. So that's how you would create an independent project. And you can start with any interactive app under that samples repo as uh, a starting point for your own project. Before we can run the app itself, uh, for those of you who've seen this before, the Simple Viewer app, what it does is it opens an eye model and gives you a viewport and a tree and a different components you can use to navigate the data. So for us to do that, first we need an eye model in the hub. Uh, there are two options here. 
you can either go to the registration dashboard and create a sample. We provide one sample to start you off. I'll post a link to this below. Or the other option is to upload your own iModel. There's a blog post about it on our Medium channel. It's called uh, iModel Upload. I'll share a link for that as well, and that walks you through step by step what you need to do to upload an iModel. I already have one from a previous post, so I'm going to use that for this example. So let's open up uh, Visual Studio Code and configure that in. So configuration can be found under source common config.json. So this is where you'll type in your uh, project and I model name. In this case, I already have one. I, I'm just going to reuse that. So let's uh, go ahead and fill that in. Same for the I model name. Let's save. And the last thing we need to do is rebuild. So we'll just uh, run our build command again. And now all we have to do is uh, run the app. So <laughs> what we'll do is npm run start servers, press enter, and that launches the app. And once you see uh, the backend listening on this port, that means it's running. So we'll go ahead and launch it. So it's running on localhost. That's the, the default uh, deployment for local testing, the way the symbol viewer app is configured. So let's click sign in. don't have a connect account you'll have to create one and I'll add a link for that at the bottom as well once you sign in you should see this open sample I model button you click on that and this starts fetching the I model from the hub to create a briefcase copy that is used by this app great and here's our I model and this is what the simple view app looks like we have four components we have this viewport and we have this tree right here which can be used to navigate the I model data then we have a properties pane uh, to show properties of elements that are selected. And finally, we have this uh, table view for uh, a multi-select. And all of these are React components, and that's what the iModelJS UI library is based on. So we'll go into the actual code of how we get to this point within the app. All right, so we have uh, set up the app successfully. We just did a quick demo, and the last thing is a code walkthrough. So let's uh, jump to that now. So the walkthrough for the source code. So I'm going to just run through some topics here. We'll feel free to add anything if I miss something out. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the source folder. In that, we have uh, three different folders. There's uh, backend, common, and frontend. So just to start off, just to make it simple for you guys, uh, the backend and the common, look at them as boilerplate. You're not going to spend much time there for a frontend app. So in an iModelJS app, there's the front end and then there is the back end. There's a blog post about this back end versus front end code on our Medium page. Uh, it's uh, this one right here. I'll add a link to this as well. A lot of links in this uh, in this video, in this post apparently. So we have uh, the back end. In this, uh, there's uh, several different types of back ends. It could be one for an Electron app. That's the code uh, to initialize one for Electron. Uh, and then one for web is this one right here. And it's the, the wrapper around that is essentially this uh, this main function that figures out which platform, if this is Electron or Web, and then uses the right uh, backend. That's essentially what it's doing, and it's setting up a local backend that will be used for testing. That's how this app is configured by default. Once you want to deploy your app for an actual production environment, you want to use a deployed backend, and there's more information about that in that same post. Okay, so then we have uh, Common. Within Common, there is uh, Config. We already looked at that. That was setting up our iModel and project. Then there's Configuration.tc, or TS. Uh, I'm sorry. So uh, in this, you have uh, some categories of backends. This is the local versus the general purpose backend. This is a uh, this variable name is going to change soon. You get to pick one or the other depending on if you want to deploy or use the, the local backend for testing. So uh, then we have this uh, some other variables right here. So this, if you want to deploy an app, you need to actually have a client ID. You need to register that app, uh, and also you need to assign the redirect URI, which is the the URI to which this application is returned. Which URL do I need to go back to? once a user signs in. This is an OIDC concept. And there is more information about this in the Getting Started page, and I'll, again, add a whole link to that as well. I just okay. want to mention that um, the client ID that's currently hard-coded in here can be used for just initial testing. Right, this client that, ID right here. That will be functional, but exactly. should be replaced. So uh, then we have the RPCs. Now, RPCs, these are interfaces. It's essentially APIs that expose backend functionality to the front end. The core difference between the backend 
the front end is the back end can open up uh, the it has access to the file system, so it can open up a briefcase since it's in a, in a separate server. Uh, and the briefcase is a local copy of the AI model. So this RPC, what that does is it exposes some functions, uh, not just that allow access to that briefcase uh, for reading, for example, data from the AI model to the front end or getting the tiles for a display and then presentation rules for how the content is set up. So all these RPC interfaces, they expose a certain set of APIs. They can be indirect, for example, the read RPC interface is required for opening an AI model connection, which is the front end class that allows access to information of the AI model. We'll look at look at that here in a second in the front end code. So that covers common. And finally, we have the front end folder. Again, just to simplify it for you, the API folder is more mostly boilerplate. The place where you will spend most of your time as a front end developer are these components. So um, let's look at API. We'll briefly go over this. This just gives you an interface for logging if you want to enable your own custom logging. And then uh, this RPC TS, what this does is initialize the RPC client that enables uh, those the, the API that we saw in those RPC definitions in the common folder. And then uh, finally, the simple view app TS. This class uh, initializes different functions within the app itself. Uh, there's one for localization of uh, strings, uh, UI core, UI components, uh, different iModelGIS uh, API and classes, and then enabling the RPCs, and then the OIDC for the sign in functionality. We use OIDC. Finally, uh, when the is ready. This is the place where the handover happens. Anyway, so uh, then we have the components. So this is where I talked about you'll, you'll be spending most of your time. So first, let's just look at, I'm going to look at the index.tsx. So in this.html, all that has is this uh, root div is really what you need to worry about. And then in the index.tsx, this uh, we get that same root div, and then we render our app component on that. You know, app is a React component uh, that's the that kind of defines the entire app itself. Uh, this is a uh, core to React. And in uh, app.tsx, this essentially has all the code that gets us to that workflow of signing in all the way to displaying our I model. Something to note here is that it uses the app.css file, which is our CSS of how the layout is set up. And uh, there's some things that I can point out right off the bat. There's the header, there's content, there's top left, bottom right, right top, right bottom. And those are the sections that you see right here. There's this header and the content itself, and then the four different sections that are defined, top right, top left, uh, and so forth. So then we have the app.tsx itself. So the simplest way I have uh, found for going through uh, a React component personally is just look at the render method because then you can see you can relate it back to what's happening on screen and walk through that, that same workflow. So let's do that here. So this component has some state variables that define the internal state. And what we have here is if the user is signed in or if that process of signing in is currently loading, uh, there's the offline I model. Let's ignore this one for now because the offline functionality is currently disabled. And then there is the I model, which is the I model connection that we talked about, which is that uh, front end data source essentially is how you look at it. This is your primary data source uh, handle that connection to the back end uh, briefcase that's been opened. And so any data queries you have towards the I model, they will be through this uh, iModel connection API. And then finally, we have the view definition ID, which is the it's a unique ID used to def identify which sort of view state will be displayed when the iModel uh, initially is loaded. So after this, uh, yeah, let's go back to that render so we can trace the functionality. Um, we have, uh, we check to see if the user is currently loading. If there is a user currently signing in, then uh, just change that. Uh, it shows that little text of uh, that's in process. And then we see that first. And if the user is not signing in, then we see that uh, widget that we saw with the sign in early on. So we rendered that here. And then this is just callback functions to when they click on offline mode. Once we have a user signed in, the next thing we check is do we have an I model and we definition ID open? If not, then we have that open I model button that you see. When a user clicks on that, we go through the actual process of opening the I model. So we can look at that real quick. So what happens is uh, we pass in this function this dot I model selected. You can see it right up here. And that's how we do callbacks in React uh, from a child component to a parent component that uh, when this open button, it's done uh, opening the I model itself, then pass that I model handle uh, back to this parent component. And that's what you that that's why this function is uh, used as a callback. Let's look at this open I model react component. There's a state of whether the I model is currently loading or not. And it takes in the I model and project name from the config that we saw earlier. This one right here. Once we get this, we get the actual project GUIDs using some connect API. 
And when we have the actual uh, unique IDs for the I model and the project, we finally return that information. And this is the actual on-click event. And uh, finally, we open the I model based on that ID uh, for the project and the I model that we got from above. And when we, we wait for this, and once we, the I model is opened, then that's passed into this callback function. And that's when we can finally start doing things with our I model. So what we do once that handover happens is uh, we get this I model. Now either we successfully got an I model or not in that callback. If we did not, then we just go back to that same state of we don't have an I model undefined. We're setting the state of that React component. Otherwise, if we do have an I model, then we attempt to get the first view definition ID just to see if there's a default view state within that I model. If there is, then great. That's what this function is about. And then we just set the state, which is the current the state of this component. We pass the I model and the view definition ID that we got. So in a React component, when you set the state variable, it triggers a re-render because to the component, what that means is, hey, something has changed internally and that might le lead to a change in what is being displayed on screen. So it makes sure to re-render if there's anything that's changed. And in this case, there is. We go to else if we have the I model and view definition ID in this case. So we go to this last statement where we have this other React component in which we pass in the I model and the view definition ID. And this is a very simple one. All this component is, is uh, it just has a simple render method and it just renders those four components that we saw that we started with the viewport, tree, properties, and grid. And you can see the CSS being included right here, app content, top left, right, bottom, those positions that you see on screen right here. So that's how we get to this state. And that pretty much covers up the uh, core of this uh, structure that we have here. Within these components, the only thing I want to talk about and briefly mention is this thing called unified selection. So when you click on a table component, you will see that we have this. This is the UI components library from the iModelJS, and we get this table component from that, and then we instantiate it with uh, unified selection enabled, and that's how we are getting this table component. And we do that to the tree widget as well, to the viewport, and also to the properties pane. So what what exactly is that? What that does is it instantiates unified selection for this uh, particular app. And what that looks like is, let's say I click on an element here, but you can see all these other components reacting. The properties pane reacted to that. It got some information about the component and the table did as well. The reason these components are able to listen to those events is through this unified selection global state. One last thing I want to talk about is the package.json, and this has a list of all the, the dependencies, the different packages that this project uh, depends on, and there's some dev dependencies as well, which the environment depends on. Since iModelJS is open source, you might want to include uh, a package of yours. There's a, an example of that where I show a drag and drop interface, how to add that very quickly in, uh, within your app, so I'll post a link to that as well. To add a new package, and all I have to do is npm install and save. What the save does is that saves it in that package.json and updates that the dependency list. You can see that it's been added to this list. Now, one more thing that you want to look for is a lot of JavaScript libraries are going to require a types declaration file for the API to work in TypeScript. So I recommend looking for packages that already have that available so you don't have to worry about trying to add your own custom uh, type definitions, which you can do. You can look that up, a bunch of articles on it online, but I don't recommend that approach if you can find a package that has the type declarations that's the best case scenario. In this case, there is one, and this is a dev dependency, so I want to add save dev, and it's called at types react drop zone. I forgot to add the NPM, I apologize. And there you have it. All right, Will, I think we covered uh, a lot of topics today. I think this is going to be helpful. Do you have anything uh, to add to close out? No, I'm, I'm just glad we can get this out for uh, especially these guys that we've been working with recently. I think it's going to be a big help um, for a lot of people. And uh, if there are some additional questions, I hope people feel free to send uh, us uh, comments on, on the blog or get in touch with us.